Um, another question from a great name. I'd like to pitch this guy, Rick, and really elaborate on his name. Not done this for a while. His name is, you ready? Cameron, this is nice. Loader. Cameron Loader. Oof. I like that. Good, isn't he? Is he rich? Because it sounds a bit like loaded. <sighs> I mean, he could play on words there, couldn't he, really? He's been a member of the Rich Hills Golf Show podcast since the 11th of June, 2020. 20? OG. Wow, loaders. Loads. Loads. I like loaders. Uh, his question <laughs> is, and this is something that I feel personally, Rick, um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, well, I'm trying to think of the word to explain it. Not educated. Um, doesn't matter. I'll think of it in a minute. But what's everyone's honest opinion on mini drivers? Are they worth it? I have real mixed thoughts about this. Mm. Because I have... Um, Oh, they've got a question for you here as well, Ben. Cameron's asked, and when is Ben com- going to convince you to come to Australia? Some amazing courses down here. We actually did have a potential plan to go in December, but unfortunately it's not going to work out. But I'm working soon. on it. Working on it. Um, I've mixed views because as much as I, I've still not quite got my head around mini drivers. And this year I, th- I feel like I've been more convinced than ever before from my own testing. There's two golfers that have made me convinced that mini drivers have a place Mm -hmm. you're one of them thank you very much the way you've hit your mini driver when you've had it in the bag genuinely makes me question why do you even carry a normal driver Mm -hmm. like i think you've hit it so good this year but it's not a miracle club correct i've also seen you hit bad shots with it but i think when the confidence is high with it it's really high yeah like you literally had a piece of string at certain points of today of this year and the other golfer oddly enough and i've only seen it on videos is micah morris yeah so i've played golf with micah he hits the ball so far it's actually a joke and with driver i see him put in so much trouble when i have played with him with the mini driver he still takes advantage of his length but he's so much more accurate yeah so so i think for the right golfer i do think there's a place for it i hated them i thought i didn't understand them whatsoever and I've said this before, and I will say it again. I don't see it as a mini driver. I see it as a huge three wood. And that just changed my... I thought to myself, if I'm struggling with driver, which I do, let's be honest, why do I then want to replace it on the tee with something smaller? Because that's going to take away confidence. However, if you use it when you would often use a three wood and think, oh my days, my three wood's now become huge. It fills you with confidence. So off a fairway, it's so big. You can really try and almost hit down on the golf ball because the head's so stable through the turf. It just hits it for you. And off a tee, it's kind of like, right, okay, my driver's not quite working. Should I get a three wood? Well, actually, I've got a big three wood. Just, yeah. I still think, and and we spoke about it not too long ago, I still think there's a real... uh, and, and I really hope brands bring this out this year, a real importance on bringing out a lofted driver. Yeah. And we saw it with the top golf driver this year, like make something a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter shafted, more loft. Genuinely, that is the fix for most got people's driver issues. Like I remember when I was, when I used to coach at full time at Trafford Golf Centre, I used to have this 16 degree tail made driver in the studio. And if someone was struggling with driver, I'd just say, just give this a hit just out of interest. I wouldn't tell them anything about it. Almost all the time they hit the ball better. Do you want to know why this isn't a thing? And I completely agree with you, by the way. And from my experience with custom fitting, obviously my old job many moons ago, it's because of the way that people buy golf clubs and it's all done on launch. Yeah, it's ego, isn't it? Of course it is. Distance. So if if I get, I used to do it all the time. I I asked Nike when I worked for Nike, could they send me some more shafts of all the different mad shafts I had, but shorter? And I had some, I think the little shorts had rather an inch short or maybe even two inches shorter than stock. I should give that to golfers, put it in a lofted head. And honestly, it would be like a frozen rope, straight, straight, straight. You look at the distance versus either their own driver or another driver had given them a few shots before. And inevitably, they'd lost a little bit of distance. Maybe not loads, but definitely some. When people are spending their hard-earned cash, they want to buy the driver that goes the longest. Yep. If, however, he did that same fitting and said, right, you would never do this, but go play 18 holes with your own driver or whatever. Now go and play 18 holes again, or even three holes with this new driver. I'd almost guarantee they'd shoot a better score with the shorter driver. And they won't be thinking, oh, it was a little bit shorter on hole three. They'd be thinking, oh, I birded that hole or I parred that hole. I still think, though, genuinely, if you, even if they played better, <laughs> I still think it'd be a hard sale. You're right, yeah. I think it would. But I, but I honestly think if a big brand this year made a huge push for lofted drivers really sold the the benefits of a lofted driver and short, shorter shaft i think they'd win mm. and make it cheap don't make it expensive make it 250 quid 300 quid and it is the ultimate 
Easy, easiest, genuinely easiest club to hit. The stabilizer. Lo- loft. <laughs> loft is your friend. Yeah. And and that again, going back to that mini driver point, it's got loft. Mm. It's your friend. Correct. So like I just yeah, I think I think the brands need to come out with that. 